Diabetes mellitus is a group of metabolic disorders and as a result of these metabolic disorders, patients will present with persistent hyperglycemia and this is normally caused by either deficiencies in secreting insulin or either resistance to the action of insulin as a whole. Um, you've got different types of diabetes. The ones that people are most familiar with is type 1 and type 2. Uh, these are the most common classifications of diabetes. Let's talk about it in a bit more detail. So, as I said, it's a group of metabolic disorders and a patient will present with persistent hyperglycemia. Now, this leads to abnormalities uh, in carbohydrate, fat and protein metabolism as a result of this mainly carbohydrate metabolism and that's why patients will present with hyperglycemia. Other causes of uh, diabetes mellitus could be secondary diabetes. This could be as a result of any pancreatic damage. As you know, it's uh, damage to the pancreas could uh, damage the islets of Langhans, leading to a decrease in insulin secretion or absolute um, inhibition of insulin secretion. You've also got gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes occurs uh, during pregnancy and uh, following delivery, it should resolve. Otherwise, it'd have to be reclassified. Now, all drivers who are treated with insulin, whether that's type one or type two diabetes, must inform the DVLA that they are being treated with insulin. The reason for this is this because there's an increased risk of hypoglycemia and that hypoglycemia could lead um, could essentially lead to the driver passing out or becoming unconscious. As a result of this, there's increased risk of a crash. Some exemptions to this are if uh, individuals are on it for a very short period of time. Therefore, once they've stopped the insulin, the process of applying to the DVLA and once they put it on your record, the patient may have just stopped taking insulin by then. So then it's not worth um, worth the hassle really and it just won't be effective. Uh, drivers treated with insulin should always carry a blood glucose meter or blood glucose testing trips, uh, testing strips when they're driving, that's crucial. Uh, other things that uh, patients may be able to use now are continuous glucose monitoring meters rather than a glucose meter. Uh, drivers should test their blood glucose levels no more than two hours before driving and every two hours when they are driving, just to ensure it's in the correct range now this is um this is this doesn't really um for especially for a type 1 diabetic this re really isn't soon enough because there could be drastic changes within two hours i think it's just meeting pe diabetic patients in the middle by uh giving something that's actually possible to do um i'm a type 1 diabetic myself and i can i can state that within two hours, your blood glucose levels can change drastically. But for myself, I use a continuous glucose monitor, so I know where my blood glucose levels sit every five minutes. So these are things that patients could and could have, and more and more type one diabetics are on continuous glucose monitoring as well as type two diabetics. 